Hi, everyone. This is Angel Your Lady Luck. Welcome once again to Reasons Now Told an audio blog by Ray Bianting. Topics discussed here are also discussed in detail at Advanced Game Foul Academy. Do you want to breed the game foul you want? And also save time and money? Oh boy you can. By minimizing hit and miss in breeding. So what are you waiting for? Enroll now. Just send message to RBS Premium and FB. Or text 0917716986060. Understand real breeding. Be a real breeder. Without understanding breeding, one will never be a true breeder. Learning a little science is not about winning all the time. It is enough you win more than you lose. But mainly it is all about producing the game foul you want. With less expense. And in shorter time. Because you are eliminating much of the trial and error. Most important, as a supposed breeder, you have to give the right answers. When people start asking the right questions. So it helps to learn what you are doing. They who are open-minded welcome something new. They who think they are already masters, do not. They are afraid to discover they might be wrong all along. Those who refuse to learn something new, are stuck with what they know, both the right and the wrong. Those who study leave behind what is wrong, and move ahead with what is right. Now here is our host. Thanks Angel. Our topic today is about breeding for fighting ability, or how to produce game foul with the fighting ability you want. Fighting ability is of course the most important. But there are other factors that dictate the expression of fighting ability. To review there are three elements of a good game foul. Namely, substance, form, and function. Substance is the genotype, or genetic composition of the game fowl. Form is the phenotype, or simply the looks. These are the traits that can be seen. Function is fighting ability. The substance of the game fowl are comprised of all the genes, both those which can be seen, and those which cannot be seen. Examples of those which cannot be seen are recessive traits. For example the phenotype of the chicken is gray in plumage, but its genotype actually carries genes for red plumage. Now since, red is recessive to gray, only gray will manifest in the phenotype. If you will breed this chicken it may not breed true to type. It may produce red offspring, because its substance includes this recessive trait. Form is phenotype. And, phenotype consists of the observable traits those that can be seen in short form is how the game fowl looks like for example comb type plumage color leg color station and body conformation traits that can be observed we can judge a potentially good game fowl by its form examples of excellent form are sound body conformation good station great balance and nice gait. And of course, excellent form also means efficient body parts, such as legs, wings, eyes, and others. Finally, different types of chicken have different functions. Broilers are designed to produce better meat. Layers to lay more eggs. For game fowl, fighting ability, and prepotency are the functions. For a battle fowl excellent fighting ability is enough. However, a broodcock should possess not only good qualities, but must also be able to pass on these traits to its offspring. In short a brood fowl must be prepotent, with desirable traits fixed in its genotype. A prepotent game fowl qualifies as a seed fowl. Therefore, it is a game fowl with sound substance. 
In game foul breeding, a good game foul is a game foul that fights good and can pass on these good traits to its offspring. Okay. So it is clear. The elements of the game foul are number one substance or genetic composition. Next is form or looks. And then function or fighting ability. And since we are dealing with fighting cocks here, the most important of course is fighting ability. However, you cannot achieve good fighting ability without putting in good substance that will result in good form and eventually good fighting ability. Right? Before we proceed we will mention once again that in 2019, Airbase Ugbo is working based on different priorities. No fighting anymore. And as usual less selling. RBS will continue selling only breeding materials. And to members of Masong Nagmam and Oak programs. And students of the academy. RBS has already proven its roosters can hold their own against tough competition. RBS will now concentrate on contributing its share. To making things happen. For the ordinary game foul lovers, RBS will continue the research and information sharing and producing excellent breeding materials that are affordable to the common man. One of the projects of RBS is the research and development of the Philippine fowl, a new breed of Philippine chicken that is both for meat and for fighting. It is for food security and livelihood. Let's wish RBS success on this project. Now back to our topic. What really are the factors that affect fighting ability and how to breed the game fowl with the fighting ability you want? Back to our host. How to breed good fighting game fowl. If you wanted to produce a good fighting rooster, then you have to understand first what makes a good fighting rooster. A good game fowl has excellent cutting ability and extreme gameness. Then it has superb fighting ability. What makes superb fighting ability? Well, good fighting ability means different things to different people. To some it means the cautious and high-flying roosters. Described in the Philippines as Albong at Angot. To others it means multiple strikers and great ground shufflers. Yet to others the offbeat, defensive, clever fighters are best. But science identifies just two factors that dictate fighting ability. These are instinct and reflex. Yes, as simple as that. But why do game fowl have different fighting style? At online course Practical Science of the Game Fowl, taught at Advanced Game Fowl Academy, we identified other factors that affect the expression of instinct and reflex. Examples are temperament, tendency, and structure. For instance, let's assume that the instinct of the game foul is to avoid being hit when the opponent strikes. But different game foul have different tendencies. Some would duck, some would sidestep, and some would counter strike. Tendency results in three different moves for the same instinct to avoid being hit. Temperament also influence fighting style. A rooster with an aggressive temperament tends to counter strike, while a rooster with defensive temperament tends to duck or sidestep. Then physical structure also affects fighting capability. Some game fowl have limited agility because of their structure. Some can't be fast because of structure. This scientific concept will become clearer to you when you study Airbase Ugbo's wild type genetics taught at the online course Practical Science of the Game Fowl. Wild type genetics says that sharp instinct and quick reflexes are essential and thus naturally present in the Game Fowl's genetic composition. Tendency, temperament, and structure are also essential in the wild but to a different degree from what is required for fighting in the pit. 
It is the job of the breeder to improve on these improvable wild type. Then there is a matter that breeders have to do themselves. These are the traits classified by science of gamefowl. As the mandatory mutations. These mandatory traits are the only obligation of the breeder. To produce themis elves. Indeed science is not that complicated. On the contrary, science can make breeding easier. What the old masters failed to tell us. Now science can explain.